from the Gardening at 58 North. In this video I'd like to show you the latest addition to my plant collection and that's this fern here. So this is a Devalia fern. I saw it the other day in the garden centre and I couldn't resi resist getting it, mainly because of the way that it's been growing. So I've tried growing plants on rocks in the past and on wood, but it's quite difficult because what tends to happen is, unless you keep spraying it every single day and misting it, the rock doesn't stay damp enough for the plant to live off. So it's very hard in a household environment. But I saw this the other day and this is advertised as growing on a lava rock. So this rock that it's growing on is actually porous. There's lots of little holes inside it. It's a bit like a sponge. So as long as you keep the tray with water in the bottom filled up, um, you, it's always going to be damp and that's going to provide enough moisture and humidity for the plant to survive. So there were several of these rocks with plants on them at the garden centre. Some of them were shufflers, um, other ones were other types of ferns. But this fern in particular stood out for me and this is the Devalia fern. What I really like about this is the way it grows is quite unique. Um, there are a few other ferns that grow like this, but, but generally when you think of a fern this is what you think of. So normally with a fern you have what they call a rhizome, which basically looks like a trunk or a stem. And that's where the leaves come out from. It's normally quite a fat bit in the middle of the fern. It holds a bit of uh, energy and nutrients, basically like a storage system for the plant. And it's the, in it's the, the main body of the plant which the, the leaves grow from and what the roots grow from. So the leaves from the top, roots from the bottom. It's normally just a big fat trunk. They vary from fern to ferns. Most ferns, as you think of them in the classical sense, they just have a very small one, probably about the size of an orange or something. Um, but you get most extreme examples are the tree ferns in New Zealand. They have massive fat trunks um, and they're actually still rhizomes technically. And those trunks, um, what they do is they actually grow into, into trees eventually and they only grow about an inch a year, but they can get to about 30, 40 centimeters wide and maybe two meters plus tall. Um, so this is a very very different type of, of rhizome. Instead of having a single one, these actually are the rhizomes here. The ones that look almost like like uh, like roots or something coming down. These are actually the rhizomes. And what happens with this fern, instead of having it in one small section and then leaves coming out of that section, the rhizomes kind of grow along and creep until they actually branch and they look more like branches of a tree or, or, or a normal kind of plant. And they'll cover the surface of rocks and or they grow on, on trees and they'll just go along the surface. What they'll do is that as they grow along, if they find anywhere with a good amount of moisture, they'll put their roots down, get the moisture they need. And as they go, you can see they throw up these, these leaves every now and again. So this gives the plant an advantage when it's growing on a, on a, uh, on a tree or on a rock. It gives it a lot more stability because it's spread out. It's not a big plant in one small location. It can spread out its roots and its stem. Um, to really find anywhere that's the best place to grow. What this allows it to do is with the rhizome creeping along the ground it'll keep going, it'll find a good bit of water or, or nutrients so if it's in the tree it might find a crevice in the tree or a crevice in the rock. It can then put its roots down and get more nutrients and water and send it to the rest of the plant. So that gives it a real advantage for trying to be an epiphytic plant. Whereas other ferns are stuck in one location, this fern can move around almost. You know, if you find a really good location and the original spot wasn't so good, it can even uh, allow the original section of the plant to die and keep growing on in the more in suitable environment that it's found. So this is quite a cool looking fern, as I say. It's, it's other common name is a rabbit's foot fern, just because the, the stems look really furry. They've got lots of little hairs on it, a bit like a fur on a rabbit's foot. Let's show you a close up there, just so you can see how hairy it really is. It's, it's really soft hairs as well. Um, it feels a bit like a fur on, on a plant, on, on an animal, sorry. So it does feel a bit like a rabbit's foot, if, you, if I imagine what a rabbit's foot would feel like. So this should do quite well, hopefully. Uh, as I say, it's the first time I've, I've seen this product. And I'm looking forward to see how it does. I was tempted to get the other ferns as well, but uh, as I say, I'll just go for this one now, see how it does. So this is a Devalia fern, as I say. The label didn't have any, any species on it, it just says Devalia, which is the genus. So. It just gives me a rough idea of what kind of fern it is. I don't know the exact species, but most of Alia ferns, they are tropical. So I'm going to keep the summer warm. And um, being a fern, like most ferns, it does like a humid, damp environment. There are ferns that can tolerate dry, but this one in particular does like it quite humid and damp. So I'm going to keep it in my bathroom. It's north facing window, so it gets light all day, but it's never direct sunlight. It's quite a bright location, but as I say, direct sunlight would be quite damaging for this. You can also see the fronds on the fern. 
they're very they're very um, well segregated. You can see there's lots of little teeth. That's often a sign that a fern likes it a bit more damp and humid. And also they're very very thin, so these will dry out very easily if I'm not careful with um, with this humidity level. So that's another reason a bathroom would be a great situation for this. So I'll hopefully give you guys an update as this goes along. What I'm expecting to happen is more and more rhizomes are going to grow over and cover the rock. Um, what I might have to do is do a little bit of pruning now and again to remove some of the rhizomes because I like the look of having it on a rock, the rhizomes going over. But if the rhizomes completely cover the rock and I can't see any rock anymore, it just looks kind of like a weird uh, rhizome mass covered in leaves. It doesn't have a nice rock appearance. So I'll keep it trimmed as so there's not too many rhizomes. But I do want some more to come down here. You can see there's a couple up here which will hopefully come down. Same here. This will be covered nicely. But I will take off any if it gets too congested. So the lava rock itself, um, as far as I'm aware, is a natural product. I think it is actually from lava. I would like to try and see if I can get some more of this lava rock without any plants on it. And then maybe try with my own plants, maybe some orchids or other things. Try and get other plants to grow in the rock because I really like the idea of a plant growing from a rock. The way they started it is that all they've done is they drilled a hole in the top, put in a plug with a tiny bit of soil and a plant in it, and then let the plant grow over the rock and find its own way over putting its roots through all the different cracks and crevices in the rock. So it's, it's quite an easy way of doing it, I think. Um, as I say, I need to have a look if I can find a rock, maybe drill a hole in the top of it and find my own method. So there shouldn't be too much feeding that needs doing with this to begin with. There is going to be a small amount of nutrients and minerals that leach out of the rock that the plant can access. But I will every now and again just put a tiny bit of fertilizer into the water or maybe as a water from the top and let that feed flow of the surface. But being a fern, it doesn't need a whole lot of feed. And the other thing is if I feed it too much, this, green, this rock will go completely green with algae and I'll start looking quite nasty. So I don't want to give it much feed, keep it quite low on the nutrient side of things. Try and keep it nice and warm and humid and hopefully it'll do quite well for me. So I think that's all from this video. Um, as I say, I'll try and get some more of these rocks if I can, put my own plants on them. Or maybe even get some more from this collection that this company just started doing recently. And uh, hopefully they'll do some more different plants. At the moment it's just ferns and, and shepherds. So I think the uh, umbrella plant. So it'll be interesting to see if they come up with anything else. There's certainly a lot of epiphytic plants out there that I really like. There's a lot of ferns, there's a lot of bromeliads as well. I think bromeliad would look really nice on this. Um, you know, some of those nice ones with the big pitcher kind of leaves that look almost like they're um, like a fern. They come into a nice rosette and they have a flower at the middle. Also, orchids might be suitable for this. Possibly something like a phalaenopsis orchid there, epiphytic. Um, the rock is maybe a little bit coarse for them because their roots are very fat, whereas these roots on this are very thin. I'll see if I can find you some of the roots. They are very, very small, which is why they are so well suited to this rock. You can see that's some of the roots there coming down. So fern roots are really fine and they can easily find any of the cracks or crevices. Phalaenopsis roots actually look much more like the, the rhizomes on this plant. They're very fat and uh, they can't go into small crevices. But they do have a good ability to stick onto surfaces. So they could easily stick onto the surface of this. And as it's a damp surface, they should be able to pull off enough moisture. So I'm hoping maybe I can put my miniature orchid in a rock like this if I can find another one. So I think that's about it for now on this video. Um, I'll give you guys an update in a few weeks time or maybe a few months time when this is put on a bit more growth. And I'll maybe need to do a little bit of, of tidying up here and there just to stop it growing too much.